So I'm uh, joined by Sam Herbert from, from 67 Bricks um, and Anne Michael from uh, AIP uh, to talk about this year's contact, which we're very excited about on the 29th and 30th of November uh, as a hybrid online and in London. Um, and by way of uh, starting the whole conversation, I just wanted to ask um, either of you, really, what are you most looking forward to about the, uh, the conference um, in November? Do you want to go first, Anne? Oh, sure. Um, so I think the most, so so oddly enough, although I'm extremely excited about the program and can't wait to jump into that, I'm really excited about being in person. I know it's a hybrid event, but I've been able, fortunately, to be able to arrange to go there. So I'm very, very excited. Contact was the first post um COVID, well, not post, but the first conference I went post lockdown in 2021. And I'm real excited to kind of see everybody again. And um, it was a fabulous environment with the hybrid environment last year. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. But we could get into speakers. I'll let Sam uh, <laughs> lend his uh, opinion first. Yeah, sure. I, I, well, same for me um, in terms of seeing people, being able to have the kind of conversations that really require a bit of time away from you might I would have probably previously said the office but away from your your chair in front of your um your camera um you know those kind of conversations that are really about the state of the industry how, what change is happening how it's happening um how are people really getting things done what's been successful what isn't those kind of conversations around the event and around the you know the insight that the the, the great presenters we've got coming th th that's what personally i'm really really excited about yeah i think it's true to say that the face-to-face -face -face environment experience last year was a big positive uh, we had a lot of feedback on that um and uh, judging by the uh, uh, early registrations there's a great deal of enthusiasm for in real life experiences still so we look forward to that um, yeah. we're, we're, but, we're, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, you know, um, from a, a theme perspective, I, you know, the theme of contact is pretty consistent. But what I really love about this year is the um, the underlying theme of culture, and I think that's hugely important. Um, so I'm very, I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot of the the sessions on culture, but even. Um, inferring and discussing cultures from all of the presentations because it's turning out to be one of the great enablers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with that. Um, um, so we've been sorry, Clive. I, I would, can I just follow on from that as well? Yeah, yeah of course. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I absolutely agree, man. And I just wanted to give my, kind of a, a little in little insight into our thinking around or at least maybe my thinking at least, around how we came up with the program and what we thought was important this year. Um, I think in terms of kind of big changes happening in any, any industry, you kind of start with the question, why? You know, why do we need to change? Why do we need to change? You then kind of move on to the question of what, what needs to change? And then you're kind of into the how. And I think as an industry, I think the question of why is now kind of we've moved on from that. You know, there's so many whys. There's so many good reasons for change being needed in our industry um, from, you know, um, user uh, expectations to you know, the amount of content in the world, the amount of data, the, the, you know, the ob obvious kind of environmental and you know, external challenges in the world right now. There's so many reasons for why. I think we've moved on to the more of the what and the how. And I think, for me and for us, I think kind of really everyone is kind of chall is challenged with the how. And I think that's where and why we're, we kind of brought in quite a few presentations around culture. Because when you start to think, when you well, when you're doing change around a particular prototype or a particular piece of work, then that's a relatively simple thing to fix, right? Well, I can get an ex internal person to do that in a short three to three month project, or I can get external. But in terms of, okay, now we realize we need to change as an organization. We need digital transformation. How do you do that? It, you know, it, it very quickly moves away from technology being the biggest challenge there to culture being the biggest challenge or enabler, as you said, Anne, which I really like. And, and so that's why we've kind of brought in quite a few um, presentations around that cultural challenge, um, but also to look at how other industries, and we, we picked a couple of um, presentations from the music industry, which I think is always really interesting for us because they, you know, they were forced to change and very, very 
kind of rapidly and dramatically and it'd be really interesting for us to learn from that again and i think that's again about that about a bit about the what but also that yeah, how did that happen and how is it shaken out and you know who won and, and and why did they win and you know all those kind of things which i think is really interesting you know um and, and wh- one of the things i really love about this program too is that so we're looking at examples in other industries but i um i'm actually kind of excited about our keynote too with robert terry because I am looking forward to hearing about the culture overall within research and the scientific process, because we're not just as organizations that might be um, you know, either publishing or service providers or doing other things often related to um, STM. We're not the only cultures or microcultures that exist. We're also part of a larger culture and the culture and the way that our customers are changing and being challenged is going to be really important to how we are challenged and and what we need to do. So I I love that outside um like meta perspective in a way. Yeah, I think that's great. So go ahead, Clive. The the uh the putting the program together was a joy. It took quite some time, but as um, Sam has already said, we have got um a very broad sort of reach of different experiences, not only um, the music business, but also some consumer online businesses as well, um, and, a, and a really interesting geographical and industry split um, with 20-plus sessions and lots of opportunity for um, uh, really uh, learning from the, uh, the experiences that uh, many of our speakers have been through. Sam, do you have specific speakers that you would like to uh, just highlight? Yeah, a few, but, but um, one of them, well, uh, yeah, the first one I'd like to highlight is I think it's interesting to get, and again, it's an external perspective. I think for a long time, we've been very kind of inward focused. And I think that's been a, a right thing to do for a while, but to have Guy Yarrow from um, Private Equity um, and from Beaumont Capital to give us an external perspective on how does the outside world, how does private equity view disruption and how do they value disruption, I think is really interesting. I've heard him talk before about what are the things that really matter to them in terms of, you know, picking the future winners. And, and that's really, really interesting. And he talks quite a bit about, you know, data and the use of AI and so I'm, I'm really interested to hear, again, that external perspective, I think, is really, really interesting. But that was that was my first one. I don't know if Anne's got another, another one she would like to highlight. So um, I'm actually excited about two that kind of, uh, I, I guess they're a little bit similar, but yet different. So um, one of them is Vicki Williams. And um, I'm what I'm really excited about with Vicki Williams, she's the CEO of Emerald, Publish- of Emerald Group. Um, She was the CEO of Emerald Publishing. And um, a while back now, I guess they're probably well, almost two years into this experiment, they've tried to restructure in order to promote the cultural attributes and the ways of working that um, they felt were going to be important for their future. So I really want to hear how that's going and what kind of lessons she's learned. Uh, I'm also, though, related to that, really excited about um, Kathy Christian because, um, and I'm, I, I mean, I love them all. I'm just picking these two out because I feel like they're, they're almost a little bit of bookends. Uh, I had a few conversations with Kathy as she's preparing for this. And the title of her session is, so you decided you need an entrepreneurial culture. Now what? And I think that one of the things I'm seeing in a lot of these cultural transformations is people are starting to get the words right but they're still not exactly closing the gap between making the words translate into behavioral change and actual change, really living the words that they've chosen, which are often fine words. So I I think Kathy has a great perspective on that, how you do that, how you move um, your culture needle. And so I'm I'm excited about both of those. Fantastic. Um, Yeah, and I mean, in, in, Conjunction with the Emerald piece, I'm also interested to hear, you know, the, the De Groyter piece about their, their process and their um, challenge around creating a culture of innovation, which I think is very, really interesting. On a, on a kind of a individual speaker, I'm really quite interested and excited to hear Finbar Joy. He's been a, a great um, presenter at um, Contech, and he always 
presents a very um, practical um, um, and interesting view on kind of how, how do you achieve change, how do you achieve change, how do you um, deliver innovation from a very kind of um, actually what do you need to do and how do you do it perspective, which I, I'm really looking forward to. Yeah, yeah. As an aside, we've got a uh, coming up fairly soon. Uh, Finbar is doing a, like an introductory webinar for people to to check out how he performs. So uh, that that'll be in October. Um, so we're approaching our fifth content, guys. You've been involved all along, and um, uh, I think we've we've all already expressed how excited we are about the program, about its objectives, about some of the speakers. Um, we, I'm really interested to just get a, a little flavour of what you feel you get out of each event, having lived through them um, with us uh, over the last few years. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I, I just, I don't know if I should say this, but I just recently had a conversation with someone about uh, all of the different industry uh, events and, and places where I tried to participate. And quite frankly, in paring that down to figure out like, what are the things I really want to do? And what are the things I would like to maybe move over and let someone else do? And the one thing that I do not want to give up is chairing contact. I was like, that's the first thing. I'm going to do that. And the reason why is because we get so much um, engagement from various parts of our community and other communities. And I find that as much as Sam and, and Dan Pollock and I and, and you, Clive and Kat, are bringing in people and saying, how about this? How about that? There are people approaching us and all of the different folks that we talk through and we talk through the program and how it fits together. Uh, I find it usually educational. So I love the fact, I love the curated program that we wind up with, but I also am uh really jazzed and excited by all of the things we kind of move through to get there. And even the creative process, like coming up with a visual and thinking about, well, what do we really want to do? And why does it matter? Like, why would anybody want to come see this? And 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 what could be helpful to where we are now? Uh, I just think it's, um, as a chair, I feel like I get this whole view that um, I just find it honestly really, really exciting. And um, I Clive, I plan to be back next year. I, I don't ever plan to stop until you kick me off. You will always be welcome. <laughs> always welcome. Sam, how about you? Uh, I think what I get from it, and I hope that other people get from it, is um, you know, presentations and insight and conversation that is hopefully just at the right level of challenge and the right kind of what we're aiming to do is not talk about things that aren't going to happen for 10 years. And we're also aiming to not have presentations and talk about things that, yeah, we, we've done that or that's been done. So it's about pushing that boundary each time and kind of really kind of working out what are the conversations that need to happen for everyone in the industry? Because we're all in the industry and we all care deeply about the industry. What conversations do we think need to happen for companies, for organizations within our industry to help them move through the next phase of change. And I feel that's what I get from it is that kind of that conversation that is really, okay, what's next and, and how do we do that and how are other people doing it and what's been done already. So, um, yeah, I think, I hope that's what, that, that's what other people get from it as well. Yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, I've been in the conference business for more years than I care to confess really. Um, and the thing that I really like about Comtech is, that, is, is as Anne said, the engagement. The engagement level, the audience has always got something to say. The audience always participates. And uh, now with our hybrid options, uh, we've got uh, plenty of new dimensions to make that happen too. So um, I just really wanted to thank you for your time and your input on this one. Um, it's the first time we've done something like this. And uh, we are really looking forward to November and uh, seeing it all come to fruition. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Clive. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you all in person, or most of you in person. <laughs>